In this video, we look at the use of the three basic programming constructs. So in order to ground this in real examples, we're going to use the example of a simple beat the dice game, which we've been using in the previous videos. If you're not aware, it's a simple game that compares one and two digit numbers. The player rolls two dice, doubles don't count unless we rolled again, and the score is the value of the highest and the lowest dice combined. So a roll of a five and seven would give us seven and five. The most simple of our three programming constructs is known as sequence. And this simply means executing instructions in order one after the other. This is the default way that programs run. And when something isn't happening in iteration or when it's not looping and repeating, then it always defaults to operating in sequence. So here we see a lines of code in Python and they simply start at the top, ignoring the comments and executing each line one at a time in sequence. The next programming statement is known as selection or branching. Selection means a program will branch depending on certain conditions. So if we look at this first extract of code, it says if dice one is greater than dice two, well, that's a Boolean expression that has to be evaluated to either true or false. If dice one is greater than dice two, if it's true, we branch and do the first line of indented code. If it's not, if it's false, then we branch and instead we execute the line of code under the else. Again, we see another example of branching later down in the program. If user input equals roll value, if that's true, we're going to output to the screen you worked it out correctly. But if that Boolean expression is not true, then we jump to the else and instead we output to the screen, no, the value of the roll is, and then we display the contents of the roll value variable. Our code is now able to make choices. An alternative to the if statement in Python is the new match statement. Now this has only become available from Python 3.10 onwards. Match statements allow one of several different branches of code to be executed depending on the value of a variable. So here we're asking the user to enter in what type of membership they have. It's then got a series of case statements. If they type child, it executes the indented line of code underneath that case statement and sets their club price to five. If they type adult, it sets it to 10. If they set senior, it sets it to 6.5. There's also what's known as a wildcard or otherwise case. If none of the above case statements match, it will always default to the bottom option there, the one being used with the underscore. Now it must be noted that we're using Python's match statement in the above example. Other languages have very similar concepts, but they're all implemented differently. The exam board refers to these as case statements. Make sure to check out the pseudocode examples shown later in this video, so you know what they'll look like in the exam. The final construct we need to understand is called iteration or looping. And there's a few forms this can take, and it's important you understand the differences between them. But in essence, iteration, sometimes called looping, means repeating sections of code. What we're looking at here is a for loop. This is also known as a count controlled loop. And it's used when the required number of iterations is known. So here we've got for roles in range, roles per player. Well, roles per player was a constant that we set to two. So this is saying for roles in range two, it's telling us to run this loop twice. We know how many times we want to run it. When we get to the bottom of the for loop, it reverts back to the top. Next, we have what's called a repeat loop, also known as a post condition loop. Now, this is used when the required number of iterations is not known ahead of execution. And that's because the variable used to determine when the iteration ends or exit is changing within the iteration itself. 
a repeat loop will always execute the code at least once as the check to exit the loop is performed at the end. So here we've got repeat and then we output to the screen, please enter the password. We then wait for the user to input the password. We then hit the end of the repeat loop and it says until password equals secret. So if they haven't entered secret, that statement's not been met, it's not true. So we go back to the top of the repeat loop and we do it again and again. And we keep repeating it an indeterminate number of times until that condition at the end is met. A while loop, also known as a pre-condition loop, is an alternative to repeat, where the condition is checked before entering the loop. This means the loop might actually execute zero times if the condition is false at the start of the first iteration. So let's actually look now at some actual pseudocode that you will see in your exam that follows the Cambridge IGCSE pseudocode format. You can always find this at the back of the syllabus. So on the left there, we have simple if statements and we do if and then we provide a condition followed by a then and then a series of statements that execute only if that condition is true. And on the right, we have the if else, which allows us to branch in one of two directions, depending on if the condition at the start is either true or false. Here we see an example of how the case statement will look in the exam. And note it's quite different from the Python version we showed you earlier and indeed how it's implemented in other languages. So really be aware of this. So we have case of, and then the identifier, followed by a number of values which can be matched along with the statements that should be executed if they do. You can optionally add an otherwise clause if you want a statement to always be executed if none of the values match. And this must always be the last option. So the example on the right there, asks the user to input their move and then if it matches either capital W, E, A or D it executes the appropriate line of code otherwise it outputs the string error. Moving on from selection we look at the first of the iterations the for loop. So in your exam it'll be for identifier arrow and then the first value to second value followed by statements followed by next. So in our example, we've got for counter becomes equal to one to 10, output counter, next counter. So the first time around this for loop, counter is set to the initial value of one, and we output one. We hit next counter, which increments counter to two, and we continue around this loop until we reach 10. You can see the output on the right there. It's possible to add an extra line to the end of this for loop. It's called a step or an increment. And this can be a positive or negative number. So in that middle section there, we've got for counter becomes equal to one initially up to 10, but stepping up in increments of two, which means every time we hit the next at the end of the for loop, we add two to the value of counter. So counters one initially, which we print to the screen, it then goes up to three, we print that to the screen, then five, then seven, then nine. It would then go to 11, which would be too big. It's also possible, as we've said, to have negative increments. So here we've got for counter becomes equal to 10. So counter is going to start at 10, head down to one and decrease in increments of minus two. So we initially output 10, we hit next and it goes down to eight. So we output eight. Then we go to six, to four, and to two. And then here's an example of our post condition repeat loop and our pre condition while loop. They're both conditional loops, which means we don't exit until the additions are met. The only difference is the repeat loop does the check at the end and the while loop does the check at the start.